Let's talk about breakout running backs in 2023, or at least positional trends in breakouts, returns, and repeats at the running back position, and what we should be expecting in next season based on those trends. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about running back expectations in 2023. I did a too long, didn't read version of the process that I'm applying to create expectations for my projections or what expectations to place on players relative to their projections for next season already. Um, I've done a lot of the work, the background work into the deeper aspects of it, and I'm ready to make some calls. So go watch that video or just trust me when I tell you that running backs have been breaking out at a below average rate over the last two years, in fact over the last three years, and we should expect breakouts. The last time we had two years with a below average breakout rate inside the top 12 at running back was 2011 and 2012, creating 20, making 2013 a really interesting year to consider. Which also brings up another asterisk, breakouts aren't all created equal. Some are better or worse in Dynasty. Early career year breakouts with high draft capital, we love, right? Whereas Damian Pierce breaks out in 2022, I'm really excited until the offseason gets here, and then we remember he's lower drafted and kind of just worked into the opportunity because of an injury. Same way that James Robinson, who's actually much better in college, worked into the opportunity and still lost his job to draft capital, and so his value's somewhat muted. Not all breakouts are even, but I want to get to that in a minute. The expectation for 2023 and moving forward at running back should be we'll see less repeats, fewer returns, and more breakouts. What's that going to look like? So like I said before, the last time we had two below average breakout years at running back since 2008 or 2012, whenever you want to date it to, to be honest, and was 2011 and 2012. In 2013, we saw five different breakouts inside the top 12 at the running back position. Notion Moreno, playing in his fifth career year, finished fourth overall. The following year, he finished 102nd overall, so eventually, I, I don't know if he even played. DeMarco Murray broke out in his third career year. That was the first year he actually finished inside the top 12. Eddie Lacy was the only year one breakout at the running back position in 2013 after that below average breakout rate for the previous two years. He finished eighth overall. The following season, he finished sixth overall. We, we forget how good Eddie Lacy was for a minute. Fred Jackson, in his seventh career year, and an undrafted free agent, I'll point out, finished 11th overall in positional rank with total points scored, 16th the following season. Danny Woodhead finally broke inside the top 12 in his sixth career year as the undrafted free agent god that is the PPR running back nightmare that we all love and hunt for. He finished 124th the year before, I do remember that was because of missed time. He was good for a few seasons after that as well. So the one thing I take away from this list is that it's not exactly the breakouts you're looking for. You don't want to go hunting a bunch of 6th and 7th career year undrafted free agents, even if they are Fred Jackson and Danny, Danny Woodhead. And there's only one first year running back breakout, and anyone who compares Bajon Robinson to Eddie Lacy is going to catch some hands from someone. But it does note that only two of them finish inside the top 12 the following year, despite the repeat rate that we've talked about at the running back position in that short video I made about the process. And the rest finish outside the top 12. Fred Jackson did still finish inside the top 24, but these are muted breakouts. That's not to make you less excited about following the trend, but it is worth noting that just because there's a below average breakout rate doesn't mean there's a high expectation of the next round of studs coming from the 2023 draft class. In fact, many of the players are going to be from previous draft classes who haven't just quite worked into the opportunity yet. Again, if we're just going to compare it to this singular example, which isn't a good process, but I do like to look at history when I can. So let's break that down further by looking at when players were playing, like in 2013, who was, an old, who was playing in their 6th and 7th career year, and who was playing with lower draft capital in their early career, over the last three years compared to the trend since 2008 or so, I think that's where I have the table set, who's been breaking out of the running back position using just those two identifiers, which we know matter, over the last three years. At running back, players playing outside their fourth career year with top three round draft capital have actually hit at a below average rate over the last three years. So just looking at that group, we've seen 16% fewer than expected over the last three years compared to that 10 year trend. So players who are further into their career but still have pretty decent draft capital, at least top three draft capital, have a higher perhaps likelihood of finally fi making their mark in 2012, in 2023. 
players playing inside their first four career years, so young players that you're still rostering and holding on your taxi squad with good draft capital, have also been breaking out at a below average rate. So Bajon Robinson, Jameer Gibbs, uh, John o. Swift doesn't count because he's already broken out inside the top 12, I think. But any of those young studs that you've been rostering, I think J.K. Dobbins is still playing inside his first three career years as well. They've actually hit inside the top 12 at a below average rate over the last three years, and that gives you more, fu more fuel to the fire. If you like the player and the situation, they're definitely not fighting against the trends of the running back position to finally break out. This might finally be Fred Jackson, Danny Woodhead, and Notion Moreno's year, right? However, players with above average draft capital playing outside their fourth career year have been hitting at a remarkably high rate, 15% and 19% above expected inside the top 24 and top 12, and only a below average rate inside their first three career years. So older players with bad draft capital, the Fred Jackson, frankly, of the world, or even the Danny Woodheads of the world, are actually less likely heading into 2023 than they were in 20, 2013. So breakouts are a little different than returns, like I was talking about a quarterback in another video that will either drop before or after this one or whenever I get them uploaded. And because breakouts quite often don't have a lot you can filter for 2022. Many of them are rookies, many of them didn't do much in 2022 or haven't done much to this point in their career and when looking for running back breakouts that's especially true. So I do have a, a way of looking for breakouts that I include in my projections and it's early days but I have applied a lot of the filters we've already talked about and we can talk about expectations in 2023. Again, I include these in my projection sheet as a single column right next to their projection to give you an assessment of how accurate the projection might be based on ranks, based on recent data trends. So let's look at that list. I don't want to break down everything I include in this because honestly I kind of have to refigure it out every time I go to adjust it or make changes or update it for the next season because it's fairly complicated. Looking across five or six different categories of what a player has done relative to the past and how many players have broken out with what they have done relative to at least five or six different criteria, I look at positional average breakouts in certain career years with certain draft capital, and then I apply those career year and draft round three year trends that I was just talking about. Based on that, while this doesn't predict breakouts, it does create an expectation of what they're ultimately trying to tell you about players who are playing or will be playing in 2023. Damian Pierce, despite his dislike um, in ADP in general, is in a good career year based on recent trends and with his previous production in 2022. It's actually fairly likely to break out in the top 12 for the first time, just based on those criteria. Again, if you don't like the player particularly, you don't like the situation, context does matter here. Because Tyler Algier also fits those criteria, but he just got drafted, man. He just got Bajon Robinson. He just got Wally Pipped. I mean... Same with Ken Walker, finished in the top 24 last year, and I was projecting him in my ranks in, in ADP quite readily inside the top 12. We had a whole argument series about whether Ken Walker is good or not, just because I had him slightly lower but still inside the top 12 in my ranks, because he doesn't catch the ball much. But with the addition of Zach Charbonnet, while it's a great career year and great draft capital based on recent trends especially, for Ken Walker to finally break out inside the top 12, and I'm not dismissing the possibility because we really don't know the future, and both of these are really good players, Charbonnet and Walker. Yeah, he's on the list, but context matters. Elijah Mitchell, same thing. He's playing behind CMC. Rats. Outside of his situation, it's actually a relatively common breakout for Elijah Mitchell to break out in a year like 2023 is shaping up to be. The next two are probably the most interesting to most people, although I pay attention to all the others too. Rashad White and Brees Hall. We know why Brees Hall is a little lower on this list. He got injured and he hasn't played for many seasons, so he's entering his second season without a top 36 season. Otherwise, he would leave this list. I think Brees Hall was probably the most likely top 12 breakout in 2023. Of course, I'm not a doctor and I don't know the recovery rate for his injury based on his draft capital, his career, and his previous production and adjusting for the context of the offense haven't gotten better. Probably. With the addition of Aaron Rodgers, I think Brees Hall's going to finish inside the top 12 next year. Rashad White is the other one. He's playing in his second career year, head behind Leonard Fournette in his first career year, but he did just enough in that he finished over the... He finished inside the top 36, um, like Brees Hall, who actually gets over the points per game threshold, but not the top 36 finish, um, in his rookie season. 
based on the three year trend and his previous production window, to think that there is a pretty decent likelihood that he breaks out in 2023. Again, if you like the player and you like the situation, although that team has got noticeably worse with the loss of its own quarterback, at value, I think Rashad White's a pretty good bet. The next category is young players, right? I didn't mention any of the rookies. Brian Robinson, Bajorn Robinson, and Jameer Gibbs both have relatively high expectations of breaking out in 2023. But because of the recent trends, it pulls them behind some of those players playing in older career years. Again, when we look at 2013, only one of them was a first round player, so the table is going to adjust first round players down a little bit. But Bajorn Robinson, Jameer Gibbs are have an open feel for breaking out in 2023. There's no real reason we shouldn't expect them to with the dearth of breakouts or the dearth of positive young breakout seasons or good performance rookie seasons at the running back position. I'm not concerned about either of them, drafting them in redraft, best ball, or for my dynasty team especially. What might be more interesting to you or might be better value to you is that Isaiah Pacheco is still kind of disrespected based on what he did in 2022 during the end of the stretch of the season and has a relatively similar expectation as a second year player going into 2023. And I know you're looking at James Cooks right there and I'm just saying I'm out. Context matters, what they did in the rookie season matters and this is purely relying off the fact that he finished inside the top 36 technically to give him any kind of signal. I, I think Isaiah Pacheco's signal was that, um, season was actually impressive relative to his draft capital as James Cook was kind of disappointing relative to his draft capital. So I would link Pacheco over Cooks but you can make the argument. He finished inside the top 36, so what, what's the diff? I mean, that's good. Follow the trends, Pete. I guess, but I'm a bit of a hater. So the story of 2023 is breakouts at the running back position. But remember, not all breakouts are created equal. One's Eddie Lacy, one's Danny Woodhead. Only two of them out of five in 2023 repeated inside the top 12 the following year. But that doesn't matter if you're chasing points for this year. And also it doesn't matter if you're chasing value for Dynasty. Damien Pierce and Isaiah Pacheco might be disrespected, in my opinion, by ADP, but they still have more value than they had when they were going into the season for, in a lot of leagues. So it's definitely worth checking out those types of players based on the trends that we just mentioned. Any questions, comments, thoughts? I really appreciate them. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to leave. I'm going to go look at wide receiver for a while, I guess. Thanks.